tiny bit of friction orbits slowly decays, gets lower and lower. And that gradual process brings us to now. It's finally coming down. And we have a date, well, a predicted window. Satellite tracker Marco Langbrook, who's apparently been watching this thing for years. Yes, his work tracking orbital objects is fantastic. Really crucial. He's predicting re-entry around May 10th, 2025. Mm. Give or take a few days. That's really soon. It is. And Langbrook's tracking allows for this kind of forecast, even for something launched so long ago. Okay, now the really interesting bit. This thing was built to survive Venus. Insane pressure, crazy heat. What happens when that hits Earth's atmosphere? Does it just poof like regular space junk? That is the multi-million dollar question, isn't it? Because it was so robustly engineered for Venus, there's a non-zero chance that some parts of it could actually survive re-entry. Survive? Like, make it to the ground? Potentially. Think about meteorites. Some are big enough or tough enough to survive the fiery plunge. This Venus lander was designed to handle extreme conditions, much tougher than, say, a spent rocket body. Okay, so we might get pieces of a 50-year-old Soviet Venus probe landing yeah. somewhere. How big are we talking? Is it, like, dangerous? The estimates put the mass of the core lander module around 500 kilograms, maybe a meter or so across. Now, dangerous. The official assessments say the risk is low. Low like meteorite strike low. Pretty much that category, yeah. Most of it will likely burn up. The heat during reentry is intense. But because of that Venus design, maybe not all of it. Okay, low risk is good. But where? If pieces survive, where could they land? 500 kilos is still... You know, substantial. Right. Well, its orbit takes it between 51.7 degrees north latitude and 51.7 degrees south latitude. So that's the band around the Earth it flies over. Correct. Which means potential landing zones cover parts of Europe, Asia, North and South America, Australia, Africa. A lot of populated landmass, actually. Wow. Okay. That sounds... Kind of widespread. But I thought the odds favored an ocean landing. They do, overwhelmingly. Yeah. Statistically speaking, given how much of the Earth is water, that's the most probable outcome. Somewhere in the ocean. Do, okay. But predicting the exact spot. Very trippy. Because you don't know the exact mass anymore or how it will tumble. Plus space weather. Does that affect it? Precisely. Solar activity puffs up Earth's upper atmosphere, changes the drag, which changes the decay rate. It makes those final predictions difficult until it gets really close. Guys like Langbrook will be refining the predictions constantly as it gets nearer. Gotcha. Okay, Good. quick recap then. What is this thing? Failed Soviet Venus lander from 72, stuck in Earth orbit. We're coming down now. 53 years of orbital decay. Drag finally won. Will it survive reentry? Some parts might, yeah, because it was built tough for Venus. Is it dangerous? Risk is considered low. Probably burn up or hit water. Where could it land? Anywhere between 51.7 north and south latitude. But again, oceans are most likely. Why did it fail in the first place? Engine didn't fire right for the trajectory burn to Venus. How long in space? 53 years by the time it re-enters in 2025. And we can track it. Yep, satellite trackers like Langbrook are watching closely. Quite the journey. It's amazing, really. It really is. A mission to Venus turns into this half-century orbit around Earth, ending with a fiery return. It tells you a lot about orbital mechanics, the longevity of space hardware, even failed hardware. Absolutely. An incredible story. So here's something to maybe go on. Yeah. That one engine failure 53 years ago leads to this event now. What does that say about, I don't know, our responsibility for the stuff we launch, successful or not? That's a deep question. The long-term consequences. Yeah, yeah. And what does this whole saga technology built for one extreme environment suddenly facing a totally different one tell us about just how unpredictable space exploration can be? The challenges, the unforeseen twists. It definitely highlights the unpredictability. You plan for Venus, you end up orbiting Earth for decades and re-entering. It's a reminder that space always holds surprises. For sure. Well, we've covered the basics of Cosmos 482's long trip and imminent return, but there's always more to dig into with these old missions, isn't there? Hopefully this gives you a good picture of this unique piece of space history coming home.